In this video, we're going to learn about structure padding in C. So structure padding explains why sometimes structs in C might not have the size and bytes that we may expect them to have based on their members. So for example, let's make a struct here called data, and we'll give this struct two members. We'll have a car member, X, and an int member, Y. Now let's use the size of operator to determine the number of bytes required to store a car and an int. So down here, we'll have printf size of int colon percent zu backslash n, and we'll output size of int. And we'll also output the size of a car. So we'll have printf size of car colon percent zu backslash n size of car. So if we save, compile, and run a program, we get that the size of an int is four bytes and the size of a car is one byte. So given that this struct has one car and one int member, we would expect that the struct would take up five bytes in memory. Let's use the size of operator with our struct data to determine the size and bytes of the struct. We'll have here printf size of data colon percent zu backslash n and we'll have size of struct data. Now if we save, compile and run the program, we see that the size of our struct data is actually eight bytes. So why is that? The reason why this occurs is what's called structure padding. Structure padding is an optimization that the compiler makes which improves performance at the cost of memory. So let's say that we want to store this struct in memory. We can think of memory like this. Here we have a series of one byte slots in memory and each slot in memory has a particular address. We need to store the data of this struct in these slots in memory. Now X takes up one byte. So X could be stored here y as an int is going to take up four bytes. So y could be stored here and here and here and here. And this would be the optimal way to store the struct in terms of reducing the amount of memory used, but it's not actually how the struct is stored. The reason for this is that when a CPU reads data from memory, it doesn't read the data one byte at a time. A CPU will read memory one word at a time. Now exactly what a word is could vary from one system to the next. We might have a 32-bit system where a word is four bytes because 32 bits is four bytes. So for example, the CPU would read these four bytes at once and then these four bytes at once. Now if the CPU wants to read all of the content of Y, so it can work with Y, it would then have to read these four bytes and then separately these four bytes to get that last byte of Y. Now that's a problem because the CPU is having to do two reads instead of one. That's going to take more time. What could happen instead is that here we could have padding and then Y could be stored in these four bytes here. Now, if the CPU wants to access Y, it can do it with one read instead of two reads because all the data is together. It can read these four bytes here and then it has all of Y. So that's why struct padding occurs. It's going to optimize performance by having the CPU perform less reads. Now it's the compiler that actually determines the struct padding and generates the machine code to actually work with the struct. So technically it's up to the compiler how it's performed but we can expect the data in a struct to be aligned to some multiple of a word if something in our struct is the size of a word or larger. The size of the largest struct member also typically plays a role in determining the alignment of the struct. Though in the case of members that are arrays or structs, it's really the size of the largest primitive type used in the array or the struct that the compiler will typically use for alignment. So right now we can expect our struct to be aligned to four bytes. What that means is that if I were to put another car member here, car Z, 
this will actually be stored in the next four bytes in memory. So we would have more memory addresses here. Z would be stored here. And then we would have more padding. So if we save, compile, and run our program, we'll now see that our struct actually takes 12 bytes total. The reason it takes 12 bytes instead of nine bytes is because the inclusion of the int member Y has caused the compiler to give our struct a four byte alignment. So if we wanted to store this struct in less memory, what we could do is actually change the order of our members. So up here, we could actually have int first and then the two cars. What this will do is store the data in a more efficient way. We'll have Y taking up these first four bytes in memory. Then we'll have X, then Z, then padding and padding, and that's it. Only those eight bytes are going to be required to store the struct. If we save, compile, and run the program, we see that the size of our struct is back to eight bytes, even though we have the same members effectively. They're just in a different order. So as a best practice, in order to minimize the amount of memory required to store our struct, we should list our struct members in order from largest to smallest. Now, some compilers do allow us to customize the alignment with which the struct is stored. So we can optimize memory instead of performance. So for example, up here, we could use the preprocessor directive, pragma pack one. This will instruct the compiler to pack our struct with one byte of alignment. So if we save, compile, and run the program now, we get that the struct only takes up six bytes in memory. So the disadvantage of doing this is that performance would suffer. But now the struct is taking up less space in memory. The circumstances where we would actually want to make this trade-off are fairly rare in practice. We might make this trade-off in situations involving embedded programming or network programming. Now I should mention that there is another way to achieve this packing effect using what's called an attribute. So I'll comment out this, and then down here, I'll have underscore, underscore, attribute, underscore, underscore, and then packed. And if I save, compile, and run the program, we again see that it takes six bytes to store our struct. I'll post some links in the video description if you're curious to learn more about these techniques. So this is how structure padding works in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers including courses to help you develop C programming projects.